وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers. I'm your host, Abdurrahman Dimashqiya, and welcome to the episode of Sincerity, Fruits, Truthfulness, and Submission. We've been talking on the previous episode about the necessity of truthfulness. And we gave some verses and some narrations of the Prophet, peace be with him, about this issue. We started to give some samples about the companions of the Prophet. We started with Abu Bakr and we described or we explained why he was described to be a Siddiq. He was extremely believer. We come on this episode to some other samples of other companions. We begin with Al Maqdad ibn Amr. The Prophet was consulting his companions before the battle of Badr took place. He said, Ashiru Aliya, advise me, tell me what to do. Then Al Maqdad said, O Prophet of Allah, go wherever Allah orders you to go. We will be with you. Wallahi, if you were to cross the sea with us, we will cross the sea with you caring not about any kind of consequences after we witnessed that you are the Prophet of Allah. Wallahi, we do not say to you what the people of Israel had said to Moses, go you and Allah and your Lord and fight and we are waiting for you here. We are sitting here. But we say to you, you go with your Lord and we will be fighting with you. The Prophet was so happy to hear this. He said, Wallahi, we will let you see something that you, I, will be cooled with. Something will cool your eye. Another narration, he said, he'd been saying, Advise me, what shall I do? Um, the narrator said that he said it and he meant by that precisely the Ansar, the supporters, the people of Medina. Because in Al Aqaba they gave him their pledge and promise to support him. But they said that as long as you are in Medina, we're supporting you, we defend you. We prevent you from, your, from, their, from your enemies. Even it may cost us our souls, our children, our property. It occurred to the Prophet that uh, if he was out of Medina, that means they are out of their promise. They don't need to fulfill that promise to him when they are. And Badr was on the, um, the distance is something like maybe half an hour or maybe one hour to Medina. So he is out of the Medina. So will they be defending him? Will they be fulfilling their promise to him? We find here Sa'd bin Mu'ad saying to the Prophet, peace be with him, it seems that you mean us, O Prophet. We believed in you. We witnessed that what you came with is the truth and we gave you on that our promises and our pledges. If you were to cross this sea with us, we will go with you. And none of us will delay. And we do not hate that you will meet our enemies 
with you. We are very patient people in war. And we are truthful on meeting, when we meet with the enemies. Go, O Prophet of Allah. And we hope and hold that Allah will be showing you from us something which will let your eye cool. The Prophet was very happy. And he said, take the glad tidings of the victory. And I can see from now the angels were giving him, giving the Prophet, the spots where the tyrants of Quraysh are going to be dying, the places. Abu Jahl is going to be dying here. Aqba, Ibn Hisham, etc. All of those tyrants of Quraysh, the Prophet was given their places where they will die. Allah promised and Allah fulfilled His promise through those who fulfilled their promise. Those are the supporters of Allah. And they were granted this name that Allah chose for them. Al-Ansar. That means those are the supporters of Allah and His Messenger. And this is sufficient honor for them. They are Al-Ansar, the supporters. That is another sample that shows the truthfulness of those companions. Another sample. A prophet was passing by or sitting and a person was passing by and he had a golden finger. And the prophet disallowed men from wearing the gold and silver. But this man was wearing that gold and silver. The prophet took out the ring, the golden ring from him and he threw it like this and he said, some of you intends to or seek to be putting around him or around his finger a ring of fire. The Prophet throw it down. What do you expect? People said to the man, pick your ring. Take it and sell it or benefit yourself with. You don't need to wear it because Selling the gold is not, is not disallowed or unlawful. But wearing gold is not for women. It's not for men, it's for women. So they said, pick the, gold, the golden ring and sell it. Benefit yourself with it. What they said was not, was not false. It was true. It's okay, no problem. But he had something else more than that. He said, Wallahi, I will not pick it up. After the Prophet threw it down, I'll not pick it up. You want to pick it? You pick it. But I'm not going to pick it up. Also another story of Kaab ibn Malik. And what do you know about Kaab ibn Malik? A person who used to witness to be with the Prophet during all of his trips, all of his fights, etc. But once he was invited and all the companions were invited to join going to Tabuk. And at that time, it was hot. And many hypocrites, they, they were delaying, postponing. They didn't want to go. Those hypocrites, they are rushing headlong when there is any lively benefit. When there is any war or fight, they lack behind. But when there is something beneficial for their life, which they expect, then they rush headlong. Now those hypocrites, they lie behind. This person, this companion of the Prophet, he lagged also behind. But he was not one of them. But he was postponing, he said, I can do it, I have two beasts with me, I have two horses, I have no problem, I can do it, I can do it. Then suddenly he found himself unable to join the Prophet, with the Prophet's army. Then, he kept thinking, what to do? Now the Prophet is on his way to come. And the man was very smart. He said, if I want to make a lie, I can make it. It's easy. I can do it. But I'm afraid that if I make a lie in which Allah will know, Allah will make the Prophet angry with me in any case. So there's no way to run away from Allah and His Messenger. 
when the Prophet came, Ka'b bin Malik promised to speak the truth. Many hypocrites came to the Prophet saying, Oh Prophet, oh, we were busy, we didn't know about it, so please forgive us. Ask Allah to forgive us. He said, Oh Allah, forgive them. And they go. He take them due to their external excuse. But when Ka'b al Malik came, he said to the Prophet, O Prophet of Allah, you know that I never gave up companioning you and being with you in all of your fights. O Prophet of Allah, if I were to give any lie, I know that it will not be beneficial to me. Allah will make you angry against me. Wallahi, I had no excuse. I had two horses in which before I did not have. I used to be having one. So I was capable. But I'm mistaken. I didn't intend deliberately to delay myself. Then the Prophet said, concerning this person is truthful. Now you go until Allah reveal, reveals to me something about you. Then, after 50 days, the Prophet, or before the 50 days, the Prophet ordered the companions not to speak to him as an ethical kind of boycott or punishment, a very kind punishment, not to talk to him. Afterwards, he said to, to Ka'b bin Malik, the Prophet orders you that you separate your wife. He said, oh Prophet, shall I divorce her? Just like that, simply. Shall I divorce her? He said, no. But stay away from her now. Until Allah revealed verses concerning him and two other truthful companions with him who had the same situation, the same position. The Prophet called for Ka'b bin Malik to come. Ka'b bin Malik was in a very critical situation. He feels loneliness. He feels fear that Allah may punish him, etc., etc. Then Allah revealed verses declaring the approval of Allah for the repentance of Ka'b bin Malik and the other two truthful companions with him. The Prophet said to Ka'b bin Malik, have the glad tidings of the best day of your life that Allah had revealed verses to approve your repentance. And that was the best day. He said, Kaab said, Alhamdulillah, after this, I will never, I never, never make any lie until I die. He was truthful in his justification. Yes, he was a sinning. He was a sinner in this that he did not join with the Prophet peace be with him, but he was truthful, and his truthfulness helped him. This is the story of Kab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Also, another sample of the truthfulness of the companions of the Prophet. At the beginning of the message of the Prophet peace be with him. There was no revelation concerning the alcohol. Is it allowed? Is this allowed? People used to be drinking and nothing was revealed concerning drinking alcohol until Allah revealed verses concerning the alcohol not to be allowed. Anas narrated that Talha was sitting and he had that, you know, a glass of alcohol him and he heard someone saying I swear by Allah I witness that the alcohol became haram and the Prophet said it's haram from now on Talha had the glass with his hand he didn't say well this is the last one let's take it and then I'll never drink but he threw it immediately an instant truthful submission to Allah he said to his relative, we have some containers of alcohol in our house. Take it out and throw it. Within minutes, 
the roads, the streets, the small streets, the passages in Medina were full of alcohol. It was thrown. The companions did not delay their response and submission to Allah. Allah did not delay to fulfill them what He promised to grant them with victory. Today, the delaying of victory for us is because of us, because we are delaying our submission to Allah. Let everybody hear this. Another beautiful glimpse that shows the truthfulness and the readiness of those companions to submit to Allah, ready for any command, do or don't do, they immediately submit and comply. Rafi ibn Khudayj, he said that we used to do, to have a certain type of deal, we used to rent the land for those who have some food, they give us food, we, give, we rent them the land, we need some food, so they rent the land from us, and we, they give us food. There's certain, I don't know the details of this. But this image of deal was disallowed by the Prophet. Rafa said that one of my relatives, that means companion, he said, Nahana Rasulullah, the Prophet, peace be with him, prohibited us from making that kind of deal which was beneficial to us. But the obedience to Allah and His Messenger is more beneficial to us. Yes, this kind of commercial deal, renting or etc., it is beneficial. But look what that companion said. وَطَوَاعِيَّةُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ أَنْفَعُ لَنَا This something used to be beneficial to us. But obeying Allah and His Messenger is ever, ever more beneficial to us than anything else. Another story. One of the companions of the Prophet. One. One. He's not known. He is among the Arabians. Bedouins. The narrator did not mention his name. He was with the Prophet, peace be with him, in the battle. The Muslims defeated their enemies. And they collected the spoils. And the Prophet ordered that this man should be given his share and portion of the spoils. When the companions brought the spoils to him, he said, I did not come for this. Why do you give it to me? I didn't come for that. They said, why did you come for them? He said, I came only to receive a strike by a sword or a spear here. And he pointed out to the place where he wished to die. The Prophet said to the companions when they told him that the man refused the spoils. He said, ask him why. They asked him why. He told them this. The Prophet said, In tasduq Allah yasduq. That means, in other words, if you are truthful in this, Allah will be fulfilling your truthfulness. And the next battle, the man was seen dead on the ground and an arrow was launched and befall him on the same place where he pointed at the previous battle. The Prophet passed by and he saw the man. He said to the companions, Isn't him the same who said so and so? They said, Yes. The Prophet said, Sadaq Allah, Fasadaqahu Allah. He was truthful with Allah and Allah fulfilled his truthfulness. Oh Allah, I make you witness that this man came to to fight for you, for your sake. And he died for his sake. He is shaheed. You see, the word shaheed can be used for both meanings. Shaheed means witness, and shaheed means martyr. 
So the Prophet used both words for different meanings, or the same word for different meanings. Look, he said, he died as shaheed, and I'm shaheed about this. That means I witness that he died as martyr. He was truthful, and Allah reached him his truthfulness. Another beautiful story. A person who sold the Prophet a beast, a camel. He made a deal with the Prophet. The Prophet wanted to give him the money. But this man seems to be afterwards, and I think I remember that the Prophet gave him the money, but he kept the camel with him. He passed by other people and they gave him a greater price than the price the Prophet gave him. They didn't know that the Prophet gave him that price. So he wanted to dissociate himself from that deal. So the Prophet wanted to take the camel. The man said, I did not sell it to you. I did not sell it to you. The Prophet, yes, you did. The man said, do you have any witness with you? Is there any witness to testify that you bought it from me? One of the companions whose name is Khuzayma, he came, he interfered and said, yes, I bear witness that the Prophet bought it from you. The man said, well, since, since, there, is, since there is a witness, finish, that's it. But the Prophet afterwards came and said to Khuzayma, Khuzayma, by what authority you testified and witnessed on something that I did not see you, you were not witness at that time? So how did he witness? <coughs> he said, I witnessed by believing you concerning the news that come from heaven on earth. I witness. I believed you in this. So naturally, I witness that what you say, in anything you say, is true. The Prophet, peace be with him, considered from that time that the testimony of Khuzayma to be equal of the testimony of two persons. And that was beneficial even after the death of the Prophet when the companions were collecting the Qur'an. <coughs> And Zayd ibn Thabit, he said, I do not take a verse from the Quran except by two persons who witnessed that they memorized this verse. But there was one verse that they needed, it. None of the companions memorized it except Khuzayma. But Zayd ibn Thabit said, I need two witnesses. But he remembered that the Prophet, peace be with him, considered the testimony of Khuzayma to be equal of two persons. Then Zayd ibn Thabit accepted that verse in which Khuzayma memorized only. He accepted it because the testimony of Khuzayma equals two testimonies of any other person. We have a lot of samples that show the truthfulness, the innocence, the greatness of those people. The story of Al-Ansar, the supporters of the Prophet, peace be with him, who used to be with him, defending him, until Allah the Almighty enabled the Prophet Muhammad to control the whole peninsula, to return to Mecca. And the Prophet returned to Mecca with full victory. What do you imagine a person, a, a commander of an army that enters the place in which he invaded I mean, what do you expect his attitude or the way he walks? He should be walking like this, with full pride that he did it, that he defeated his enemies. Every commander enters like this, 
but the Prophet Muhammad, peace be with him, entered Mecca while his neck was connected to his chest. An action of humbleness that the Prophet showed, as if he is saying, it was not by our efforts. The favor fully is from Allah the Almighty. So he's showing gratefulness that Allah granted them this victory. The companions defeated the enemies. Mecca returned to be a place of monotheism. 300 idols that were surrounding the house of Allah were destroyed. People used to say, Here we come, Allah. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik. Here I come, Allah. Here I come to you. You are the one. That you have no partner except one partner who belongs to you. He owes, you owe him, him and what he owes. You owe him and anything that he owes except one partner. This used to be the logo of the pagans when Islam came. And Mecca was in the, in the hand of the Prophet, peace be with him. They deleted that last passage, or last, this last statement. They returned to say, as Ibrahim the Prophet used to say, لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك. And that's all. The Prophet was victorious. He returned to his home place where he was born. He was driven out, he came back. But he said to the people, what do you think I'm going to do to you? They, see, they said, you are a brother, and the son of a brother. And then the Prophet did not punish them. He used to say, he used to order the companions, all the companions, to avoid shedding blood against anyone. The Muslims entered Mecca and they were trying their utmost striving and effort not to shed blood but to pardon and to forgive. And the Prophet showed pardoning and forgiveness. That also shows the greatness of the Prophet. A person who used to be slandering the Prophet extremely. When the Prophet came to Mecca, that person was running away from him. He said to the cousin of the Prophet, What shall I do? If the Prophet will see me, he's going to kill me. What shall I do? Ali said, Go to him and say to him, Go to him what Allah said. We used to be oppressive and sinners against you. They, he taught him to go to him the verse that was told about the brothers of Joseph, Yusuf alayhi salam. We, we believe that Allah had preferred you over us and we were wrongdoers. Then Yusuf said to them, لا تثريب عليكم There's no blame on you today. May Allah forgive you and he is the most merciful one. When this person came to the Prophet, quoted to him the same verse that the brothers of Yusuf said to their brother, the Prophet realized this and he quoted to them what Yusuf said to his brothers. There is no blame on you this day. May Allah forgive you and he is the most forgiven. He is all forgiven, most merciful. <laughs> universal revelation to all of humanity. All of mankind within their hearts desires to worship and know their Lord. It's part of our fitra or the innate moral nature 
on which every human being was created. The human being desperately desires to know, for what purpose was I put here on the earth? We've been talking about the Prophet entering Mecca, and we showed the tolerant, tolerant character of the Prophet, peace be with him, when he pardoned all of those who showed enmity to him and hatred, and they were driving him out of his homeland. After this, in fact, this was not the story that I intended to mention, but what I want to mention is what happened after that. That the Prophet and those who converted in Mecca, Mecca became a submissive place, a place of monotheism as it used to be at the lifetime of the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be with him. Um, after that, the Prophet collected a lot of people. There's another assault, another fight. He collected many Arabian trumpets, uh, 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 tribes, newly converted with the people of Mecca this time. And the battle took place and there were a lot of spoils, a lot of spoils in which the Prophet gave to the people of Mecca, to the Arabian tribes, but none of the, these spoils, none of it, was given to any of the supporters of the Prophet. I mean by this, the people of Medina. Whom we call Al-Ansar. Those Al-Ansar were really amazed. What's, what's happening? We got nothing. And some of them said, this is really amazing. Our swords are pouring blood. Still, and uh, the others take everything. And some of them said, mm, it seems to us that the Prophet really welcomed his special people, his, his motherland people. Then Sa'd ibn Mu'adh, being the chief of the people of Medina, came to the Prophet and complained to him what people are saying. The Prophet said to him, Sa'd, what about you, Sa'd? Sa'd said, I am but one of my people. As if the Prophet is saying, even you, Sa'd? Bring to me all people. Let's have a gathering. Then Sa'd collected the people of Medina, and they were waiting for the Prophet to come, and he came. He said, O people of Al-Ansar, what is it the thing that I heard about you? Something that I heard that you have something in your hearts against what I did. Didn't Allah find you misguided and he guided you by me? Didn't Allah find you enemies and Allah reconciled between you because the, there used to be two tribes, very enemy tribes, Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj in Medina. And Allah united you through me. They said to Allah belong the grace and the favor only. Then he said, answer me. They said, what, what should we answer you? Didn't you find something in your hearts concerning what I did? They said, yes. The narrator of this narration said, That's a general description of those companions that they never make any lie. They said, yes. This is what we've been, this is what we've been thinking about that. Yes. We were disappointed that we got nothing. Look what the Prophet said. First he said, Weren't you misguided? Weren't you enemies? And Allah guided you and united you through me? They said yes. They said yes. 
he was reminding them first about the favor of Allah, but now he wants to recall the favor of them when they said, when he said to them, if you desire, you can say this. You can say something if you want and you will be truthful and you will be truthfully believed. You'll be truthful in saying the following and you'll be believed. You came to us, that means O Muhammad. You came to us while you used to be charged with lie. We believed you and you were forsought and we supported you and you were lonely. And we helped you. The Prophet is reminding himself now the favor of those great people. First, he reminded them the favor of Allah on them. But he did not deny the efforts that they gave. The support they gave. Did you did you find something in your heart concerning a meaningless objective material that I sought thereby to support, to, to give people push in their early belief, new belief. I left them with the camel, with the sheep and the cow, but I left you the supporters of Allah for your faith. Had it not been the matter of immigration, I would be considering myself one of the Al-Ansar. Aren't you glad that people return from the battle with the, sh- with the sheep and the camel, but you return with the prophet? Who is better? People are returning, are happy to return with the sheep and with the camel, while you, Al Ansar, are returning with the prophet Muhammad. They started to cry when they heard this. Wallahi, had it not been the, the matter of immigration, I would have been one of the people of Al-Ansar. Allahumma arham al-Ansar. Wa abna al-Ansar. Wa abna abna al-Ansar. He started to ask Allah for the Ansar. And for their sons. And for the sons of their sons. What do you expect the people to do? They were extremely crying. They said, We are contented. We Accept the Prophet to be our portion. They forgot about the sheep, about the spoils, about anything else. They're happy to be coming, returning with the Prophet. This is a great lesson for us to see how the commander should be. He could have been saying, for example, I am the Prophet, I receive revelation from Allah, Allah reveals to me what I should be doing, and that's not your business, and that's all. But will you be able to remove the thing that they still have in their hearts? Muhammad is a great messenger, is a great commander, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By his wisdom, by his truthfulness, by his strictness, by his kindness, He was able to dissolve and to solve this problem. People were happy. He reminded them about their faith and about the greatest favor that the Prophet Muhammad, the seal of prophethood, is among them. Another sample. The story of Abu Talha. That shows the truthfulness of those people. Abu Talha. He used to be having a garden. And he used to be fascinated with it. And the Prophet used to be fascinated with it because it used to be very greeny. And it contains a will that contains very sweet and tasty water. The Prophet used to pass by this garden every time and, dir- and drink therefrom. When the verse, this verse was revealed, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will never, you will not attain righteousness until you spend from the thing you like. 
sometimes when we do when we dislike the thing we say well let's donate it let's give it so sometimes we donate the thing that we do not love but the best kind of donation is when you give the thing that you love for the sake of the one whom you love and i mean by that allah the almighty abu talha the owner of that wonderful garden came to the prophet saying to him o oh prophet Allah said, you will not attain righteousness until you spend from that which you love. I make you witness. I have this beautiful, wonderful garden. And I know that you like it. And after the revelation descended to you concerning this verse, after this verse had been revealed, I declare that this garden is left. I donate it for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. So put it, O Prophet, in any way you find it proper. The Prophet said, Bakhin, Bakhin, and that's an expression. As you say, wow, in English. Dha kamalun rabih, dha kamalun rabih, dha kamalun rabih. This is a successful, prosperous kind of wealth and property. This is a great and gainful gaining trade this is good for you this is the best trade and the trade with Allah never fail it's always it's always successful another story and that's the end of those beautiful samples of our predecessors the stories of Umm Sulaim. Who is Umm Sulaim? A marvelous, faithful woman that her husband died in the war. And there used to be a man who was fascinated with her. He wanted to marry her. But he was not Muslim at that time. She said, I can't marry you. I said, what do you want? Islam, I'm going to be a Muslim. You want me to be Muslim? What is your dowry? What is the dowry you want? She said, If you convert and submit to Allah, that is my dowry. She didn't say, Well, I need an apartment and I need this, I need some golds, I need some treasures. No. She was not thinking about life. She was thinking about what the Prophet said. If one person is being guided through you, it is better to you than the treasures of the whole earth. She was thinking about to gain this kind of treasure that people don't really give that much care about. They care about lively things. She said, In tuslim mahri. If you convert to Allah, if you convert to Islam, that's my dowry. That's all. Say la ilaha Allah, that's my dowry. In which he said, Abu Talha had a child from Umm Sulaim. The child became sick. Abu Talha wanted to accompany the Prophet, peace be with him, to go with him. And he was worried about the child. Umm Sulaim said, Don't worry, Abu Talha. Go with the Prophet, and I'll take care of the child. He went. During the day, the child died while he was in the arms of his mother. He died. His mother buried him in a neighboring place. And she told her family, Don't tell Abu Talha about the death of his son until I be the one who will tell him. Abu Talha came at night. The first question was, what happened with the boy? Oh, before that. She put her makeup for her husband. Not as we see today. Women put their makeup when they go out. They forget to put their makeup for their husbands. But they may put it on the street for the people. Umm Sulaim did not forget to put the makeup when at the same day 
when her child died. She did not forget her obligation towards her husband. She wanted to reduce the surprise, the agonies, the pains of his son's death. She welcomed him with a smile and she prepared food for him. He took his food and she invited him to intercourse. Well, I'm not ashamed to say that because we have to really wonder and to be amazed about this. How can a woman invite her husband for this at the same day when her child died? <clears throat> then after that, after he finished, he's happy, she said to him, Abu Talha, tell me, if our neighbors borrowed us something in which they asked us to return it to them. Should we, should we, de should we uh, decline? Should we refuse to get it back to them? He said, "No. Why should we? Uh, that's her. Uh, that's their stuff. That's their belonging. It belongs to them." She said, "Well, seek, and imagine, and hope the rewards from Allah for the loss of your son." Abu Talha was amazed. He was angry. You waited until I ate and I, and I intercoursed with you and then now you're telling me that my child died. Abu Talha went to the Prophet, peace be with him, and told him the details of this. The Prophet said, If Allah decrees something, a cause of the meeting that occurred between you and your husband, Allah will be blessing your offspring. Allah will be blessing your offspring, your descendants, your children. The narrator said, Allah had provided Umm Sulaim and Abu Talha with 12 children. All of them memorized the Quran. All of them memorized the Quran. This is the blessings of patience. This is the blessings of submission. This is the blessings of truthfulness. Not only the men, the male companions were truthful, but even the female companions were also truthful. Can you imagine that kind of society? It is not amazing after hearing those stories of those great people to know that Allah fulfilled His promise to them and granted them victory. We are amazing. And we are not also amazing. Why today we do not deserve that victory? Because we have the problem that our predecessors did not have. We need to be truthful. We need to be sincere. We need to say, we need to, to confess our, our mistakes and our shortcomings. Let this be also the lasting moments and occasion to mention to you the story of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was the truthful with as siddiq extremely believer. Abu Rabi al-Aslami said that I used to be serving the Prophet and the Prophet granted me and Abu Bakr a land. We were neighbors in the land. It was divided for me and Abu Bakr. And we had some disagreement about the limit of the land. There was a palm tree in which Abu Bakr said it belongs to him, but I said it belongs to me. Abu Bakr was angry and he said some word, a certain word that made me upset and he regretted for then Abu Bakr forgot about the land. He said, Abu Rabi'ah, ah, say to me the same word that I said to you. A bad word, something was not explained. 
Abu Rabi'ah said, no, I'm not going to say it to you. Abu Bakr said, you must say the word that I said to you. He said, no, I'm not going to say it. Abu Bakr said, Wallahi, if you didn't say it, I'll go to the Prophet and complain him against you. Then Abu Bakr went and he rejected the land. Abu Bakr rejected the land. He doesn't want the land anymore. He wants to be forgiven by Abu Rabi'ah for the word that he gave him because he knows he wants to make sure that he'll be transferred from this life to the next life while no one has any right against him. Are we cautious for this? Are we so eager for that? I'm sorry to say, many of the Muslims today need to reform themselves in order to, to rush the victory of Allah the Almighty. Anyway, Abu Rabi'ah followed Abu Bakr and the tribe of Abu Rabi'ah, they followed Abu Rabi'ah to support him. They said, may Allah, be, may Allah forgive Abu Bakr, why he has to go to the Prophet to complain you, although he is the one who said that bad word to you. Abu Bakr did not go to complain against him, but in a matter of fact, he went to complain himself against himself. He, came, he went to tell the Prophet that he said a bad word, and that made the Prophet oblige Abu Rabi'ah to say it to Abu Bakr, so Allah will be forgiven Abu Bakr. Subhanallah. Abu Rabi'ah said to his tribe, Do you know who is that? He is a Siddiq. He is the companion of the Prophet in his immigration. They said, So what do we have to do? He said, Wallahi, if he turned back and he saw you following me, that means to support me against him, he may get angry. And the Prophet will be angry for the anger of Abu Bakr. And Allah may get angry for the anger of the Prophet and Abu Bakr. So they said, what do you suggest that to, us to do? He said, get back. Get back. Then Abu Rabi'ah said, Abu Bakr went to the Prophet and he told him everything. What do you mean by everything? That means he, he told the Prophet what he said to Abu Rabi'ah. I said to him such and such. His closest relationship to the Prophet, we know that he is to be always the closest to the Prophet. He didn't want to take advantage of it by making the Prophet biased to him. No. But he came to seek, to take advantage with the closeness of the Prophet to him, to help him. To oblige Abu Rabi'ah to say the same word to Abu Bakr. What kind of society is this? Abu Rabi'ah reached to the Prophet. And the Prophet said, Abu Rabi'ah, what do you have to do with a Siddiq? Abu Rabi'ah said, Oh Prophet, we've been disagreeing about the limit of the land you gave us. And he said that, this palm tree belongs to me, and I said it belongs, but it belongs to me. And he said a word, he wanted me to say it back to him, but I'm not going to say it to him. The Prophet said, yes, don't say the word to him, but say to Abu Bakr, may Allah forgive you Abu Bakr. May Allah forgive you Abu Bakr. May Allah forgive you Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr went away while he was crying. These are the samples of our companions. Those are our model after the Prophet, peace be with him. They fully understood the message, the revelation. And they fully and completely and perfectly practiced it. We need to follow their footsteps. And we need to take them as our examples. They are the best generations that the history ever witnessed. From the beginning of the time of Adam until the day of judgment. They are the best generations. We ask Allah the Almighty to reform the situation of the Muslims 
and to help them to follow the traces and the footstep of their predecessors. And we hope thereby, by our returning to Allah and following those good examples, we attain victory and pleasure of Allah the Almighty. We thank you very much for attending these wonderful stories in this episode. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ooh, ooh, ooh.